May God never permit another earthquake like that. I only think that if something like the 1918 earthquake happened today, it would leave Puerto Rico in ruins. Punta Borinquen, Aguadilla, the waters began to withdraw immediately while the earthquake was still being felt, and then came back as a 20-foot wave, reaching up to 300 feet inland. At Punta Gujerada, also in Aguadilla, eight people drowned. Hundreds of palm trees were uprooted. Here, it is calculated that the waves were up to 20 feet high. In Mayagüez, where the tsunami arrived at estimated 20 minutes after the earthquake was felt, the lower floors of buildings located along the coast were flooded. Here, the waves reached five feet above sea level. Further south, the waves registered little more than four feet, but they were strong enough to pull out houses and drag them into the bay. In Bocaron, a town in Cabo Rojo, waves were three feet high. Here, the water began receding an hour after the earthquake. A small boat that was anchored 150 feet off the coastline in four and a half foot deep water rested on the ocean floor for a few minutes when the water receded. In Isabella, along the north coast, the wave was seen by many people a half hour after the earthquake. In Arecibo, the wave was observed entering the Arecibo River. In Canovanas, the river called Rio Grande de Loiza retreated and then surged three feet above its normal level. It is estimated that the wave reached the river entrance 20 minutes after the quake. Other triggering mechanisms for tsunamis are landslides, volcanic eruptions, and an impact by an object in the ocean. Tsunamis produced by these phenomena tend to be very large close to their point of origin. But as they move further away, they become smaller. Therefore, it is most likely for this kind of tsunami to affect an area closer to the point of origin. A landslide that takes place either underwater or on land, but whose debris enters a body of water can generate a tsunami as it displaces great amounts of water. There is evidence of a major landslide on the south side of the Puerto Rico Trench. It is estimated that its volume was around 220 cubic miles and that it dropped 28,000 feet into the trench. Depending on the duration of the landslide, computer models suggest that the sea level could have reached heights between 87 and 227 feet along Puerto Rico's northern coastline. There is also the risk of a tsunami caused by volcanic eruptions of either submarine or subaerial origin. Among possible submarine eruptions, the greatest threat comes from a volcano called Kikimjeni, located in the southeast region of the Caribbean, 450 miles away from Puerto Rico. This volcano has been active for many years. It has had more than 10 eruptions since 1939. Among surface eruptions, the danger is associated with volcanoes such as Zephyr Hills on Montserrat, which has recently been very active. In this case, a local tsunami can be produced either by debris avalanche reaching the ocean or part of the volcano collapsing into the ocean. In both cases, the local tsunami could exceed heights of 30 feet, affecting nearby islands, but then it would diminish quickly, not affecting Puerto Rico. Although slight, there is the possibility of a tsunami being generated by the impact of an asteroid or other large object from space on the surface of the ocean. Some theories argue that this kind of event could have caused the extinction of dinosaurs. In the open ocean, a tsunami generated by an earthquake is generally less than 3 feet high, but it can travel at a velocity of more than 450 miles per hour. The speed of a commercial jet plane 
Since tsunami waves are small in deep waters and there could be miles of distance between them, a tsunami can travel unnoticed over open ocean. When it approaches the shore, where the waters are shallow, the height of the wave can increase dramatically, in extreme cases over 50 feet. At the same time, the waves slow down to less than 20 miles per hour. A tsunami is a series of waves in which the first is not necessarily the largest wave. The distance between waves may range between 6 and 300 miles, depending on the size and depth of the source area. Regardless of water depth, the whole column of water is moving below the tsunami. Unlike normal waves, where water flows in the same direction for a few seconds and is no deeper than a few feet, tsunami waves affect the entire column of water and move in the same direction for several minutes. This, combined with the distance between waves, makes water volume and energy a lot greater than in extreme surges, such as those associated with Category 5 hurricanes, the strongest in existence. Many tsunamis have waves that break differently than normal sea waves. Some present themselves as a quick rise in sea level or a sudden flood. An example of this phenomenon is the tsunami of 1918 in Mayaguez. Other tsunamis have waves that break as they approach the shore and reach land as a violent rush of water with an abrupt front or bore full of breakwater. This usually happens when a tsunami enters channels, river mouths, bays, and harbors. This was the scenario in St. Thomas in 1867, following the powerful earthquake in the Virgin Island Basin. When the tsunami hits the coast, direct damage to property can be caused by the flooding, the forceful impact of water, as well as debris on structures and erosion of the soil. Indirect forces, which can also cause great destruction, such as fire, can be generated. The vertical height or run-up of a tsunami, as well as its penetration inland or inundation, are functions of its height in open ocean, but they are also influenced by topography and variations on the ocean floor near the impact zone. Tsunamis can travel up rivers, causing damage thousands of feet inland. This was observed in the 1918 tsunami in Puerto Rico. Tsunamis can drag deep sea material which may later be deposited on land. The presence of this material at a particular site can be determined by trenching and drilling. Research concerning previous tsunamis using this methodology is known as the study of paleo tsunamis. These kinds of studies have been done in Puerto Rico showing that the island has been affected by tsunamis prior to the 1867, 1918, and 1947 events. Sometimes, when a tsunami strikes an island that is relatively small compared to the distance between waves, the greatest run-ups and inundations don't take place on the side of the island where the tsunami strikes, but on the opposite side. This behavior was absurd in Vieques in 1867. The force of tsunami waves is enormous. A water current moving at 5 miles per hour as a force equal to 160 mile per hour winds. Those associated with a Category 5 hurricane. Because of its often small height, one may see a tsunami as non-threatening. But it is capable of dragging or destroying bridges, concrete buildings, trains, automobiles, and any structure without a strong foundation, including large ships. There are many fault zones located around Puerto Rico that could generate not only significant earthquakes, but also tsunamis. The fact that Puerto Rico is located in a zone of convergent plate boundaries puts the island in an area of high seismic activity. In the Puerto Rico region, the North American and Caribbean plates are in contact. The North American plate is subducted under the Caribbean plate. In addition, the Caribbean plate is moving northward below Puerto Rico. This is why the Puerto Rico area is very active. North of Puerto Rico lies the Puerto Rico Trench, the deepest part of the Atlantic Ocean and highest negative gravity anomaly on Earth. It is a zone with many faults. Just south of the trench and north of Puerto Rico is the 19-degree north seismic zone, 
which also includes many fault systems.